Uh, this is the new A1 Fly as uh, manufactured by WDP. Uh, this package here is basically what you would receive if you were to order this just from the factory. This is one of their limited edition A1 Rasta Flies as popularized by Marcus Nielsen. Uh, you've got a special limited edition anodizing job that's a couple different tones. Familiar with the Rasta theme, you've got the yellow, green, and red all throughout the entire gun with some uh, laser etching on there. Uh, with the standard A1 Fly features, just a quick list, you've got your uh, fly paper grip inserts, you got your standard o, uh, OLED USB circuit board inside the gun. Uh, limited edition graphics, they've got a couple different ones for the Rasta. They have another one like the Wonder Boy edition and a few other limited color schemes. Uh, new with this gun, of course, is the new Magnil valve, which is WDP's patented innovation that takes a valve spring and actually uses magnets instead of you know, a typical conical valve like you'd see in an Intimidator or anything else. It's very unique, very detailed. We'll get into that a little bit later. What you see in the packaging here is basically what you'd get if you were to buy this off the shelf. You got your full color manual that's actually really great. Comes with pictures and complete disassembly and uh, instructions on how to operate the circuit board and disassemble the gun. As you can see here, you got some you know, warnings here and there from the new user for more experience. This will get down to everything, including your tournament locks, every different mode that's on the gun, how to set it up, troubleshooting, et cetera, et cetera. WDP has always been known for having fantastic literature with their guns, which is an A plus on their part. Fantastic manual overall, can't complain about it whatsoever. Uh, with the gun, you get a couple of accessories that's unique to this gun. Number one is the toolkit. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, fashioned like an iPod or whatever else you'd see, comes with many different spares, your typical O-rings, a set of detents. Uh, I believe it used to come with a valve face, but not anymore. Uh, some other, or, I'm sorry, a bridge seal. Inside here, you'll find all the typical spares and anything else you need. Uh, as you can see there, you've got all your essential Allens. You've got another uh, tool which might confuse some users. Given that a little bit later, what you see here is a threaded rod that's shaped like an Allen key, but it doesn't have a hex head on it. Uh, moving on from there, you got your barrel kit, and that's one of the things that changed with the A1 fly. It comes with some pretty cool things on it. You've got a pretty big bore setup here. You've got a 691, 693, and 695 that comes with the gun. And of course, a composite carbon fiber tip that's manufactured by Slide Equipment. Uh, going on from there, you've got your oil, which is called the WD WDP Love Juice. That's kind of a throwback to just what used to come with their LED angels. Uh, you basically drop this in the ASA or, you know, on the rammer assembly in there. It works out pretty well for you to make sure your gun's running tip-top. Moving on from there, we'll get into some of the basic features of the gun. What's so unique about the A1 Fly and what made it so popular is, of course, the Magno valve, the new features, and some of the stuff that they've corrected along the way of, along the, way of the A1. When the A1 was first released at the beginning of, at the, towards the end of 2006, it had several problems that it started with the development. One of them was with the eye covers, another one was with the breech seal, another one with the bolt, and some other things. Another thing that they updated in the second, second generation was the detents, and a couple other minor issues that they fixed. As it sits right now, this gun, very solid out of the box. Uh, this is, of course, a limited edition one. You can get whatever color you want, so if this one's not for you, surely WDP will have something you'd like. Uh, on this gun, you see it comes standard on the fly. You've got the grip tape, which is actually similar to a skateboard deck. You've got that underneath on the trigger frame right here, on the sides of the gun, and on the grip inserts. Uh, they're pretty much unique to this gun. Uh, there's no other options for it, but it really does keep it, keep it to your hand uh, during those slick environments or you know, cold mornings or whatever else you're playing out there. Moving on from there, uh, you've got some other cool features. Uh, they use a BlackBerry wheel from the older Blackberries on the back of the marker that's fantastic for adjusting your settings. So from there, no real problems getting to the settings you need when you need to get to them. There's no you know, LED lights you have to remember or anything like that because everything's red out on the screen. As you can see over here, we've booted up. LED flashes in the back and then you have a fly face that tells you that you're running the new fly programming which you can download on the internet. From there, uh, on this screen which you can customize, it has your game timer which is set at seven minutes and 10 seconds for your older seven minute format. Uh, the eye readout uh, and then also what setting it's on. So for instance, right there it says live, meaning that it's ready to fire. If you pull down the trigger, it won't work because there's no ball in the chamber. If you look at the laser eyes right there, you can actually drop your finger into the breech, which will change the display, which will tell you that there's a ball in the chamber. At that point in time, you can fire and the solenoid will click. Moving on from there, uh, a couple different settings you can change on the fly, which is actually really innovative. Hold the black rear wheel up. That'll go into your parameters and set it. From there, you can go turn on electronic safety, find information about the gun, such as the total shot counter, uh, software updates, etc., etc., things like that. And then moving on to the favorite parameters menu. From there, you can change all your modes and everything like that. Valve dwell, debounce, paint type, maximum rate of fire eyes on, maximum rate of fire eyes off, breakout modes, uh, ramps, ramp settings, uh, your shot filter, anti-bolt sick or ABS, game time setting, alarm time settings, and then finally back to the main home screen. From there, you can adjust pretty much everything that you need to do. 
Uh, from there, you can go to PSP mode, you can turn your breakout mode on, whatever else you want to do, provided that your field allows it. Uh, moving on from there, we have a, you know, some really cool features with this board is that you can adjust literally everything. Although it might seem daunting to the end user, it really is the tuner's dream inside this board. There is every conceivable setting that you would ever want on this board, and also updatable via the USB interface that's within the grip. You can plug this into any computer anywhere, provided it's a PC. I'm not sure if they support Macs. You can plug that in there, update it from WDP's website, and get the newest firmware. Another cool feature that WDP was doing for some time was that you could actually plug this into the in, your gun into the internet, and it would then download your, your favorite professional player setting. Uh, from there, you can also like update if you have like certain paint you're trying to shoot or whatever off of the tournament. You can literally change your settings on the fly for whatever those pro teams are using at the time. So if you find out the Joy Division is shooting Drax's gold at your Millennium event, you can plug your gun in and it'll update itself. Pretty cool, pretty innovative stuff that WDP actually did for this gun. Moving on from there, uh, pretty adjustable regulator right there. Just drop an Allen wrench in. Uh, make sure you stick to your metric Allen keys again here because that's a big deal for these guns. Drop it in there, adjust it as you need to according to feet per second. Moving on from there, you get into the gun. This gun does not have an externally adjustable LPR. So with that, you're gonna have to edit. You have to actually get inside the gun and adjust some settings in there. For the end user, your LPR comes set out of the box how you should need it in just about every scenario. So works fine that way. Uh, from there, you'll find right here a laser engraving on the outside says Magno Valve. That's what's patented. It's actually developed by a guy named John Rice, who's a fantastic innovator in the sport of paintball. Pretty much brought along electronic paintball guns as you see it today. Uh, in this gun, he developed uh, basically what's called the Magno Valve, which instead of using like a cone-shaped spring like you'd see in a spider or intimidator, it actually uses a set of diametrically opposed magnets, which keeps the valve shut when the gun's at rest. Of course, when you pull the trigger, it drives the solenoid, which drives the ram forward, which then knocks open your valve pin. As those magnets get closer together, they repel, which keeps the valve shut after you get done with your main air cycle going through the gun. Pretty cool system, smoother than your normal spring, and unlike springs, you don't need to grind it down or it won't develop a set like, you know, an ammunition magazine or anything like that. So pretty cool stuff. Going on to this gun, never have to mess with that, always stay shut. On the first edition of A1 Flies, they ran into an issue with the adhesive on the valve face, which they've since fixed, which was the glue would loosen up, but they've got that taken care of now, so it's all good to go out of the box. Uh, on the A1 Fly, it comes with the new edition eye covers, which is actually a three-piece set. First set here, and it comes with the stem right there, and then, of course, the detent in there. Pretty cool stuff all the way around. Keeps the balls where they need to be, and you also get a spare set of detents in the toolkit here. Moving on from there, you got your laser eye sink down the breech. We'll go into the bolt. Through the bolt, just like any old Angel user will tell you, just twist the breech knob. On the A1s, you have to push the bolt back a little bit to be able to open it up. So, from there, as you get inside there, you got some serial number etching, your breech seal, and the bolt. What's unique about the Angel Bolt, which has actually been a pretty cool technology that some users, I think the Legend actually has this as well, uh, is an actual integrated soft face into the bolt. In the center of the bolt, you have a three-hole Venturi design with a soft face that will keep balls from breaking in the center there. With these guns, one of the things that was so remarkable when they first came out was their ability to be soft on paint. Uh, I believe it was at the Orange County event at the close of the MPPL, when the MPPL was still around, to give you an idea how long ago that was, they were actually taking refrigerated Draxxus Gold out of freezers and putting them into these guns and shooting them. Uh, pretty cool stuff. With this bolt, you got a couple different things going on. The pin, which locks into your hammer. you got your air inlet, the soft face, and then you'll notice right here, I don't know if the camera can catch that, the, actually the grinded down face of this. Basically what this does is as the ball stack sits within the breech, when the ball's sitting there, if one makes it into the breech halfway, when this bolt comes forward, instead of clipping the bottom of that ball, this ramp actually will push the next ball in the stack upward. Pretty cool. Uh, you'll see that featured on the Cure bolts in the E-Tech. That was what the Cure was to stop them chopping. Pretty cool feature, stops paint breakage, which is pretty much one of the best things about the Angel. So as we get that back into there, slide it back into the breech block, close it up, lock it into the hammer, which if the camera can catch it right there, is one of the things that most people mess up with demo guys, which actually really irritates everyone. But lock it in there, close it up with the breech knob, and you're good to go. Uh, from there, if you wanna you know, mess around with it or whatever else, you can actually put it in a demo mode, which will reverse the eyes. What that will do will stop it so that if you're in a store or whatever else, it will invert the eye so if it sees something in the breech, the gun will not fire, where if there's nothing in the breech, it will fire. From there, those are the basic features of the A1 Fly that really is making it sell so well. Uh, we've got another winner here from WDP, and overall, very nice out of the box. Very substantial. We've got some nice you know, stylistic things going on for it. Comes with a barrel kit, carbon fiber tip, you know, every accessory that you need out of the box to keep you on the field. And it's out of the box, solid.